Hey, welcome back to Living with Pixels. My name is Reno, and in this video, we're gonna create a transparent, sticky blur header. So when you start scrolling, you see the items through the actual header. When you go to a white background, it turns white, and it looks really cool and at the top is just a nice transparent header. This of course also works on mobile phones as you can see right here. This is a big trend in web design right now and in Elementor Pro it's really easy to do. So let's just get started. And to make it super easy for you, I have made a page with all the instructions and everything that you need. So I will put this link in the description and you can see the code that we're gonna copy and paste. You don't have to worry, it's just copy and paste. It's gonna be super easy, but you need to know where to put it. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go to WordPress and let's log in. And what you need to prepare for this is a menu. Of course, have a menu that you can work with because in the final result, there is a simple menu you need to set that up over here. If you don't know how to set up a menu, make sure to watch my basics video on WordPress. This is not a video for complete beginners, but for people that already know the basics of WordPress, but you can watch the basic tutorial if you don't know how to do this. So I have a few pages over here. This menu is called menu one, and we're gonna use that. We're gonna apply the header on a page that I have over here. So this is right now the page that has that transparent blur header but in this tutorial we're going to apply the header to this page which doesn't have a menu yet as you can see it's not even transparent so we're going to use this page for the header so what you want to do is you want to go to templates go to the theme builder and click on add new we're going to create a header template and I'm gonna call this header version two because the demo is version one in my header and click on create template. We're not gonna use this, click on the X. And for this, we need three columns. Normally you would click on this, but I say click on the first one, then delete the padding on the inside of the first column and then duplicate that column two times because we don't want the standard element or padding inside of it. So now we have three columns inside of one main section. Now we wanna apply some height because as you can see in the final result, this header is pretty big. It's actually a header that goes from here to around here. That's the height of the header. And then we're gonna make sure that the content will go beneath it and then we're gonna apply the blur when you start scrolling. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to height and set the section on minimum height. We're gonna use 135, so 135. As you can see, a very big one. And make sure that the vertical align is on middle so that the items will all stay in the middle. Since we're working on white and we don't see what we're doing, we're gonna add a temporary color on the background. Click on classic and then make sure to pick a black color, but don't put it on completely back, otherwise we can't see what we're doing. Put it on half or something like this. That's just temporary for now. Now you wanna go to the advanced tab and you wanna make sure that the content of the page will go beneath it. So we need to do two things over here. First, we have to say to the margin that we want to apply a bottom margin. And that means that everything that is under it will go up because we're gonna use a negative margin. So if you use a 100 over here, then the content as you can see will be pushed down, but we want the content to go up. So we're not gonna use 100, but minus 100. And now the content will move beneath our header. So we're gonna use the exact same height over here, 135. And we're gonna put the set index on 10. Why? Well, the set index are kind of like the layer. So set index 10 means this is gonna be the top, top of the layer, actually the 10th layer. There are no layers yet on this website, but if you're gonna add a few elements and use the numbers two, three, or four, you always know that number 10 is at least on top. If you're gonna use more than 10, of course, then make this higher. I'm not gonna put it at 10, so we always know it's on top. Now let's add a few elements and see how far we've come. So I'm gonna add a menu over here. I'm gonna drag the nav menu widget into here. Here we see our big menu. <laughs> I don't know why it's so big. Maybe that's because of this theme. Let me style this real quick. And here's a little detail I want you to notice because on the final result, these three items are transparent. So you see the video through the text. It's a small detail, but it makes the experience a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. For the normal, you wanna click over here and then put it on white, but then make sure that the transparency is something like this, 75% approximately. Then in the hover, you want a pure white, 
So the text color white, we don't use the pointer over here because I've put that at zero. We don't want the pointer on this website. And then the active one, you also want to put that at white. So then the normal page is white and then the rest is transparent. So you, you see the video beneath it or any content that is beneath it. Then I want to add a logo for this website. I'm going to use an image and then an SVG image. As you can see over here, I've used an SVG. You may get a pop-up when you insert it that you need to allow SVGs to be uploaded on the website. And then on the right, I'm gonna add a simple button. For some reason, my SVG is not showing up here, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna test this header so far. So I want you to click on publish and then Elementor Pro will ask you where you want this menu. For now, this is a test for me, so I am gonna put it on one specific page, but for most websites, you can just pick entire site, but you can also choose to only show this cool header on the home page and have a more simple header on different pages. So what you can do over here, you can go to singular and then say like, hey, I want this only on a specific page and I want this on the tutorial page. So home for tutorial. I'm gonna click save and close. And now let's go to our page. This was the original page. Let's refresh it and see what happens. And as you can see, it is transparent. We're gonna remove the header and we're gonna apply those effects and then we're done. So let's add the final details. First of all, we need to fix our logo. This is a problem that you might have. So what you wanna do to display your SVG, is you wanna click on the SVG, go to style and click on the pixels or the uh, percentage. For some reason, Elementor doesn't display it right away, probably because SVG is a vector and Elementor doesn't know how big you want it. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on one of these and then set a uh, width so Elementor knows how big you want it. So for example, like this, click on update, go back to your page, click on refresh. And now as you can see, it works. The active state doesn't work and that is because we are on a preview page. So if you wanna see how that looks, you need to go to your pages then go to the page where you applied your header to and it's still not here. And that is because this page is still on draft. So make sure to always have your page published so you can see how the active state looks. And now it still doesn't work. <laughs> and that's because this page is not part of the menu. So here are a few things where you can run into trouble. Here are your, are your solutions. So if you add the page to the menu via over here, then the active state will become white. Okay, let's now continue with the fun stuff. What you wanna do is you wanna go back to your header template and go to the motion effects tab in advanced. And first we're gonna make it sticky because right now, as you can see, it's not even sticky. So you wanna make it sticky over here, put it on top and then it should be sticky. So if you click on update, let's check it for now, refresh. And as you can see, now it sticks to the top wherever you scroll to. Now let's also remove our background color because we don't need that right now anymore. So you just can just click over here. Now you can see what we're doing. That's why we had that background. Click on update, check your final. And now it's fully transparent as you can see. And now you wanna open that page and copy the CSS that I have prepared for you. It's really simple. Just select it like this, right click copy, then go to your header. Go to the advanced tab, make sure you are on your main section, advanced tab, custom CSS, and just click over here and then paste it. And there you go. Look at that. It became smaller and it has a blur. So let's test it. We're gonna click on update. We're gonna go back to our page. We're gonna click on refresh. And as you can see right now, the blur background is applied. We're almost done. This is super cool. But as you can see, it's also now when you are at the top. We don't want that because we wanna start with that clean look. And then as, as on the final website, as you can see right here, when you start scrolling, then it comes in. That is what we want. So we need to do one more trick for that. Go back to your header template, go to motion effects and make sure the effects offset. So all the CSS that we just applied, that little code will start at 100 pixels so 100 pixels from the top when you start scrolling you can even set it to maybe even bigger uh, the same height as your header for example 135 doesn't really matter click on update go back to your page click on refresh make sure to always refresh with comment shift r and not just comment r because that is a cache refresh now you can see the blur is gone and when you start scrolling 
it starts coming in and the header also becomes a little bit smaller. It's not as small as our final result and that is because there is still some height inside of our element. So how you can delete that as well is go over here and make sure in the style tab to uh, make the vertical padding zero and then there's no vertical padding over here we only need that vertical padding if we would have that pointer because that's the width between uh, your text and your pointer if you have one like this as you can see <laughs> it's super big so put this at zero and also put the vertical padding on zero also if you want to delete this space because this frustrates me a little bit because i want it to be left aligned make sure that the horizontal padding is also on zero and then add space in between i almost always do this with this feature it's the same effect but then you know it's always left aligned to your 1140 grid let's try and test it uh, right now go back and click on command shift r and as you can see, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna scroll, the header becomes smaller and it has a blur. Super, super cool effect. And this of course, especially works well on these kind of backgrounds, as you can see. That's why I created this design. So you can see how cool this is on a website like this with a video background and even buttons like this, where you can really see it going through and with different sections, with different backgrounds, it's really cool. One last thing before we're gonna end this video, and that is that you can change the settings if you want to. So maybe you think this, this is too much blur. You can go back to your main section to the advanced tab, custom CSS, and then over here you can see the code. That is where the magic happens, of course. So what, what it says over here is that the background color should be 40% in opacity. When you put this at 0.8, it's 80% opacity. I've already said it so it looks nice on most websites, but you can also change the settings over here to make it match your design a little bit more. Also, for example, the height of um, the header when you start scrolling, you can increase that as well. Maybe make it bigger. It all animates super nicely because it has that nice one second animation and that makes everything look super smooth and cool. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Again, all the information is always in the description. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Try to help each other. If you have more ideas for new tutorials, then please let me know in the comments as well. And then I want to thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next video on living with pixels.